Fresh off the back of an initial 80-man Golden Boy shortlist, France football have now come in with a 30-man Ballon d'Or shortlist. There is a sense that we are putting too many people on these lists. Sam, what do you think? Yeah, it's a lot, isn't it? I mean, it can it can be quite difficult to wade through it at times. I mean, we can put the Golden Boy shortlist aside, which they eventually whittle down, but the Ballon d'Or come in with an extra 30, and then they end up actually ranking them 30 all the way through to one, which yeah. it seems uh, unnecessary yeah, I'd agree. to pick between 29th and 28th for the Ballon d'Or in a certain year, but it's what they tend to do. But I think it it's really... to show the grandkids, it just really It just really muddles... The situation and i think it kind of almost cheapens the idea of the nomination like the ballon d'or is supposed to be the best player in the world or the best player who have, who has played to a top level over the course of a calendar year so immediately we're talking about five or ten people max it can't be any more than that and in the messi ronaldo era frankly it's never been more than two so that's how short this shortlist should really be five or 10. And you take a look at some of these shortlists, some of these nominations again, and it's like you know, Bonucci and Chiellini there for the European success over the summer. Cool. But Juventus have been pretty dreadful this year and, and they've been a part of that. As Piliqueta, maybe he's there because it was a surprise that he ended up as such an important part of Chelsea under Thomas Tuchel and a surprise that he was able to step in and actually captain, play pretty yeah. well. Yeah, play pretty well for Spain. But was he one of the best players in the world this no. year? Did he play the best football? No, he didn't. I love the fact that Simon Kiar has, has basically been awarded this after his incredibly heroic acts at Euro 2020. But from a pure footballing perspective, yeah, not, no. Harry Kane's the there player, probably though. because he's England captain. He hasn't scored in the league this season so far, so it can't be on based on his domestic achievements. And then there's a bunch of players in there that you're like, well, yeah, Lautaro Martinez had a good year. That's as far as I... He had a good year. Um, Riyad Mahrez he had a good year. Kevin De Bruyne was injured quite a lot, actually, but it was okay. Yeah. By his own standards, he wasn't that great. No, and he lost the Champions League final. Yeah, and there's a bunch of City players in there, like Phil Foden, who did nothing but lose finals, apparently. And, and, and it, it, it's, well, you get the league, but cry, I, I, can't, I can't believe that these players actually end up on the final shortlist. And there is a cluster of names there that deserve to be on this list, but none of the ones I've just read out deserve to be there. Okay, so who is your top five? So, I haven't quite figured out the order yet, because... The, no, the, I don't the, need the, an order. I just want, you know, your initial my, but, shortlist, really. But, like, Messi and Ronaldo. Yeah. Robert Lewandowski. Yeah. Who's owed one. He is. He should have had one last year. He's owed one. And I'd be all in favour of just giving him one this year because he should have had one last year. I think if N'Golo Kante got man of the match in every Champions League knockout stage game for the entirety of Chelsea's campaign, then I think this man was prob probably deserves to be in this list. And then I think there's an argument that Karen Benzema has been unstoppable this year, just won the Nations League, played very well in the Euros, despite the fact that France weren't so great in the end. And then you've got the, the guys that won Euro 2020, who also had very good years, like Jorginho and Nico Barella. I mean, they both achieved incredible things and won the Euros. So that's club and country success. I've got seven names here. That's it. Seven names. And that's what we're sticking with. So why do why is there thirty names on this list? Is there a, is there an explanation? Is there is there a reason? I mean, I have a theory. Go on. Do you want my theory? I want your theory. I've been to a couple of Ballon d'Or ceremonies. I've covered them. I've seen it from pretty much every angle. I strongly believe that France Football, the, the publication that award the Ballon d'Or, would like as many A-list star football names on their red carpet as possible in tuxedos and wonderful suits and dresses and shoes and just looking amazing, bringing all of their wives and girlfriends along and making it a truly glamorous affair. I mean, it's held in Paris. I mean, that tells you everything, right? It is an, and it is an incredible... It is a French award, to it be is, fair. It was hardly going to be held in but Milan. It's, but if it's in Paris and it's French, it's going to be, it's going to be glamorous. And it is, it is an incredible sight to see. And of course, you want all of those names there. So maybe the shortlist is just getting as many star names there as possible in order to make your event as glamorous or more glamorous than anything else. Maybe it's just a bit of big name gratification. I don't know. Maybe it's a bit of a participation sticker. Uh, that's kind of how I feel when I'm on my most cynical of days. Is, is this why it was cancelled last year, do you think? They said it was not a normal year, so it wouldn't be fair to hand out a Ballon d'Or. They played all the games, didn't they? Yeah, I think Lewandowski well, everyone played in the French League. They, they obviously didn't. Yeah, and the Dutch. But uh, Robert Lewandowski played all of his games. Thank yeah, you he very scored much. a lot of goals. He scored a lot of goals. What a uh, Champions League. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we're still waiting for that trophy to appear in the mail. Yes, indeed. So <laughs> maybe because, yeah, they couldn't roll out the red carpet that year. I don't know. Perhaps, Am I too cynical? Perhaps you are. Perhaps you are. I think there are some names here that probably 
do deserve to to be given the you know gratification after a good season and they're probably names that are not on the bottom end of your shortlist sure but you know the fact that Luis Suarez took Atleti to a a league title I'd say is probably fair enough yeah. Gerard Moreno led Villarreal to an unlikely incredibly unlikely Europa League victory and beat a number of sides who have far bigger capacities far bigger wage budgets mm. on the way to doing so and and it was a remarkable campaign from him domestically uh, and in Europe albeit in obviously the second tier competition you have to take that into account and how you know there's one thing saying oh yeah Robert Lewandowski scored a goal or had a goal contribution every 59 minutes of Bayern Munich last season You're like sure but Bayern Munich are excellent and won everything Villarreal struggled to do things and Jeremy Moreno had a goal contribution every 87 minutes. He was part of 45% of his team's mm -hmm. goals as they won a very unlikely trophy. I think there should be some gratification for the likes of Jeremy Moreno in, in this, uh, in this uh, status. And I think that matters. Yeah, there's like a little middle cluster of names in this 30 that I'm like, okay, like good year, great year, but excellent by the standards and, and, and deserves some commendation. But there is a, there is a, the large majority of this just doesn't, it just doesn't need to be there, does it? Let's be honest. We're talking about the best player in the world. Who had the best calendar year? It can't be down to one of 30. It's yes. impossible. Yes. All right. Fair enough. You are, you are correct. We'll be keeping an eye on who does eventually win the Ballon d'Or from this 30-man shortlist here on Life School.